Welcome to the Process Model Training Series. This video teaches the basics of optimization. In this video, you will learn how to prepare a model for optimization, how optimization works, and how to modify the search to reach a target. Why is optimization needed? The types of problems modeled with simulation are complex, or you wouldn't have needed to do simulation. The best solution is often elusive because of the many interrelationships. By elusive, I mean you could run thousands or even tens of thousands of experiments to uncover the best solution. And that's assuming management doesn't change some of the boundaries of the project, causing a complete restart on experiments. You might ask, why not just use design of experiments? because it wasn't designed for these types of problems, such as how many people should be used at this operation. It takes longer to set up, it requires more training, and provides less optimal solutions. Here's why optimization is used. Optimization automatically changes model parameters to hunt down best solutions. It uses an evolutionary technique to build on good experiments and let the bad become extinct. To explain how it works, let's use an example. The example is simple enough that you will be able to optimize it in your mind and you'll be able to see how the optimization is performed. The same principles apply to more complex models. First, validate and verify the model. Second, Create scenario parameters for each of the items to be changed in the model. In this case, two scenario parameters will be used to change the number of workers, one for each type of worker. That same scenario parameter will be used to change the capacity of the activity. Next, run the model and save the output. If you run the model to completion, it's automatically saved. From the Tools menu, select SimRunner. Create a target for the optimization. A target is created by selecting stats that support the goal of the model. In this model, given a specific arrival rate, I'm trying to achieve the maximum production with the least number of resources. To get the maximum production, we need to know the number of entities that exited the model. Under Category, select Entity. Then select the statistic, Quantity Processed, and move the selection into the goal. This stat is to be maximized. Select Maximize, and then Update. Resources are required for production of this item. Part of our goal is to minimize the number of resources. Under the category, select Resource. Under the statistic, select Worker 1, Units, and move the selection into the goal. Select Minimize. We want to minimize the number of workers and update. Do the same for Worker 2. Notice the three statistics that form the target. All experiments will be judged against this goal. Each time an experiment is run, the output will reward one point for each exiting entity. At the end of the run, a penalty of one point will be given for each resource used. This means I could achieve a better score by producing the same amount and using less resources. A single number recording the result is called the objective function. Ranking all experiments is performed by comparing the objective function. In this case, the formula producing the objective function is simple. In most cases, it will be more complex. Next, set the range of the inputs for each parameter. There are two sets of workers, worker 1 and worker 2. In this case, 
the model is simple. With some quick math, you can calculate that six worker ones will be needed, four to handle the first activity and two to handle the third activity, and 12 worker twos will be needed. If the needs weren't known ahead of time, we would have to estimate the possible range and then let the computer experiment to find the best settings. Pretending like the answer isn't known, we could set the range of worker one between three and eight. and the range of worker twos between eight and 14. The default needs to be within the range and acts as a best guess. The range acts as a reasonable limit for experimentation. For example, your facility might only allow eight workers because of space limitations. Allowing nine workers might be interesting, but not practical. Limiting the range also speeds the experimentation. Next, run the optimization. You will bypass a few options by clicking the Optimize button. In this simplified example, there is no variability, so no replications will be used. In your models, use replications. Go to the next page and click Run. The graph shows the progression of the optimization. The green line represents the value of the objective function for each experiment. The red line represents the best objective function value as the optimization progresses. Every time the red line moves up, an experiment has performed better than any previous. The experimentation process is evolutionary, but at the start, the system doesn't know what will produce good results. A series of initial shots are fired looking for the highest objective function. Areas that produce bad results, well, they die. Areas that produce higher objective functions are allowed to run additional experiments. With several iterations, the process is remarkably accurate at finding local maximums running only a fraction of the possible experiments. Notice that the output is arranged so that the higher objective functions are displayed at the top of the report. The final winning experiment produced 142 entities and required 6 worker 1s and 12 worker 2s. 142 minus 6 minus 12 gives an objective function of 124. Not many of the formulas will be this easy, but they work in the same manner. Often, the elements of the formula require weighting factors to balance the bias built into the model. For example, value of items may be high per unit versus the cost of adding an additional resource. The weighting factor allows you to refine the goal. Sometimes neither a maximum nor a minimum is sufficient. For example, producing too many causes inventory holding costs. Producing too few causes a loss in revenue. In our previous model, we may be required to produce no more than a predefined amount. Let's say 100 units. The targeting function works by establishing an equal value above and below the target. You estimate how wide to make the range by trying to include most of the output possibilities. For example, 0 to 200 would put 100 in the center and allow coverage of all possible production outcomes for this model. The closer the output is to reaching a production of 100, the higher the objective function. Don't forget to open up the range of worker quantities to allow for lower production requirements. On running the new optimization, you can see how the system zeroes in on the new goal. You may need to add additional resources to go above the quantity you specified in order to hit the next level of production. In this video, you've learned how to prepare a model for optimization, how optimization works, and how to modify the search 
to reach a target. When you get a spare moment, take a look at the other videos in the training series.